We've got the remaining bout on the undercard, Ceballos and Cotto. And again, for the call of that one, we go back downstairs to Jim Lampley. Jim. All right, Bob Costas, and uh, what you're getting ready to see amounts to an expected showcase for one of the most celebrated, if not the most celebrated, young prospects in the sport, Puerto Rican Miguel Cotto. As you can see, he's 22 years old, coming out of the Sydney Olympics and unbeaten as a fighter in the professional ranks so far, going against a guy eight years his senior in Ceballos. One-inch height advantage for Ceballos two-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at the division limit of 140. Each has put on 11 pounds, so both enter tonight unofficially at 151. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Miguel Cotto, Demetrio Ceballos fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. And first to enter will be Ceballos who was expected at one point to become Panama's best fighter since Roberto Duran. The good news for Ceballos is he has experience against top opposition, including former world champions Randall Bailey, Stevie Johnston, whom you just saw, and Shane Mosley, whom you'll see later tonight. The bad news is that he lost all three of those fights by knockout or technical knockout. When he fought Mosley, he was considered a very, very live young fighter. And a very serious challenger for Mosley, who stopped him in around the eighth <laughs> round, as I recall. Um, question now is, why is he in a position to what they're calling an elimination fight, when a year ago he was knocked out by Randall Bailey? But uh, in case you've uh, lost your faith in the intrigue in boxing, <laughs> this will restore it for you. You were right. Mosley got the TKO over Ceballos in the eighth round. That was in February 1998 up in Connecticut. A little bit later, he lost to Stevie Johnston on a sixth round TKO. Then Randall Bailey iced him with one right hand on the third round. Bailey, of course, is the Dave Kingman home run swing hitter of the sport. Tries for a knockout on every punch. If he wins this one, though, he's back in the big hunt. Big time. But nobody's expecting that because everybody, or seemingly everybody, is in love with Cotto. In fact, at least one top-notch talent expert in the sport has flatly stated Cotto will be better than his Puerto Rican predecessor, a fellow named Felix Trinidad. Oh, oh, that's stepping out there. That's saying yeah, something. Yeah, but the, the one difference is, is that you know Trinidad developed as a fighter and as a personality and box office attraction over a long period of years. Uh, he wasn't, even though he became a champion at the age of 21, uh, it took time and convincing wins over top opposition before uh, he established himself as one of the top fighters in the sport. Uh, there's a serious effort now uh, to fill the void among uh, Trinidad's fans with Cotto, and perhaps uh, they're rushing him a bit, although I don't think the opposition has been uh, too serious yet. Bob Arum says this is top ranked best prospect since Floyd Mayweather Jr. Cotto beaten at the Sydney Olympics by fellow prospect Mohamed Abdullayev of Uzbekistan. Abdullayev recently suffered his first professional loss. Cotto's still unbeaten. Primary weapon, left hook. And he has about as impressive a natural left hook as you've ever seen, particularly to the body. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, the action continues. At ringside, scoring this bout on the 10-point system will be our judges Patricia Jarman, Jerry Roth, and Doug Tucker. When the bell rings, a referee in charge of the action, Vic Draculich. And now, 12 rounds of boxing in this super lightweight division. On the line, the WBC international title and the WBA number one world ranking. Introducing first, 
fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold, and weighing in officially at 140 pounds. His professional record, 26 victories, including 18 knockouts against four defeats from Colón, Panama. Ladies and gentlemen, Demetrio Pambele Ceballos. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing silver trimmed with black, his official weight, 140 pounds. A perfect professional record. 16 bouts, 16 victories, including 13 knockouts from Caguas, Puerto Rico. The undefeated WBC international champion, Miguel Cotto. All right, gentlemen, this is a WBC and WBA super lightweight elimination bout. You received your instructions in the dressing room. Again, I want to caution you. Any punches below this point are going to be called low. Any punches below this point are going to be called low. With that, are there any questions? All right, remember, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up, buena suerte. One thing you all have to understand, Costa Zoo is the unified and recognized 140-pound champion of the world. This elimination fight is to fight a fighter named Vivian Harris, who has some other championship belt uh, and is not considered the 140-pound champion. But is considered a pretty talented boxer-puncher from Guyana and who may be a future opponent for Cotto if Cotto can get past this fight. Against Demetrio Sabayos. There's the left hook, and it lands. And a jab snaps Sabayos' head back. This will be a good test for Cotto. Cotto? Cotto? Cotto. Cotto. This well will be a good test because this guy's got a long left jab, and he's from Panama, which is a long history of winning boxing matches. Well, so far in his career, Cotto doesn't pay any attention to what his opponent's styles are, at least so he says. He says, I don't watch tapes. I'm not much interested in any scouting report on the opponent. My job is to go out there and do what I'm supposed to do. Maybe later on when he gets Whoa. to the top level, he'll feel differently. But look at the way he doubles the left hook. Throwing combinations, land, gets his feet back in position to do it all over again. Everything you want a young fighter to do. Yeah, he's got a beautiful transition from defense to offense and back to defense. And some of the best balance I've ever seen. Well, you don't want to transfer, check back the defense. You want to stay on offense. Well, but I mean, when he, he keeps his hands high, he stays in balance after he's thrown his punches. He's not, he doesn't leave himself uh, too vulnerable. Well, this guy's really got some snap in his punch. The left hook again snaps Sabias' head up and back. Sabias is not doing a good job. You don't want to follow a guy who punches that crisp. Don't follow him around giving him the punches. Make him work for them. Cotto is not working for those shots. They're just coming right to him. Sabias so seemingly came in with the attitude, well, you know, I'm not going to show this guy respect. I'll go out there and show him I'm the veteran, I'm the man. Cotto has rocked that plan or that attitude, I should say, with a series of thundering left hooks. Now Sabayas momentarily stops Cotto against the ropes. Cotto goes to the body and to the chin with that left hook. Sabayas lands a right hand inside. Right hand by Sabayas, partially blocked. Cotto with the uppercut. Sabayas gets in a body shot. Cotto's got to understand that if you want to drop a guy, you've heard he's been knocked out before, got to go down to the body something to make this guy soft. Not going to be knocked down just because you hit him in the head. He hasn't done that. Cotto's got to get into the body. And you saw the difference in authority as Cotto threw a right hand over the top. Not nearly as threatening as his 
sizzling left hook. As we go to the corners where both trainers will be speaking Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. Deep breath. You're staying too in front of him. Why are you there? You, he's throwing a right hand. You're getting in. You're right there. Put him to the body. And, and then throw the jab. And move to the left. Avoid his left hook. All right, now? Hey, let's work the body. Okay, you know. You know how to box. And you got to... You don't have to just hustle it. Work the body. Okay. Don't forget now. Get the opportunity. Don't, don't open. Get over careless. Let's go. Cotto's trainer is Evangelista Cotto. And the trainer of Demetrio Ceballos is Celso Chavez. Total copy box numbers in round one. Miguel Cotto, 24 out of 62, 39%. Ceballos is given credit for landing only four out of 75 punches, including zero of 54 jabs. He may not have been trying to land them. Cotto, 11 of 25 jabs himself. Easy round for Miguel Cotto in the first. Let's see if Ceballos can follow instructions. He probably heard those same instructions, George, a thousand times in training and then forgot about them once the fight started. Once again, Cotto hasn't gone to the body. He seems to wait for nothing but a head shot. The big boys, they can be dropped, but you got to go to the body first. Unless you can punch like Randall Bailey. Yeah, but we saw Randall Bailey taken apart by Dio Bailey Surtado yeah, well. in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Sometimes Bailey comes to fight without really being prepared to get his best effort. Ceballos was urged to stay away from the left hook. It's Cotto's job to make that impossible. And there's a left hook. Cotto is, is movement, which is very nice, is something I don't recall in the previous occasions when I've seen him. I don't know if this has been a part of his uh, picture all along. But I think he's moving very nicely, showing patience. Well, I'll say one thing. He's certainly more of an all-around fighter than Trinidad, who no, was, no, of course, a devastating a punch. puncher. No, this guy's got not have even about a, a body punching repertoire. Now, well, sometimes he's, he's a better. good combination fighter, but that's not, that's just going beyond that. Yeah. Well, he does throw the left hook to the body when he doubles it, but I agree with you, George, that he hasn't thrown perhaps as many body shots as you might have expected. In fact, he just doesn't seem to throw the right hand much at all. He's got an opponent in front of him who really came to fight. He's going to be there for him every second of every round. Go to win a kind of a peekaboo there. Warded off all of Sabias's punches. Sometimes you go into these fights and your guys are telling you all during training camp, this guy's dead. So-and-so knocked him out. He's dead. He's walking dead. You're going to knock him out. You go out in the first round and hit him with some good shots, and he's still there. And the fighter got to readjust. Second round, much less eventful than the first. Mark your calendars for these upcoming pay-per-view shows. October 4, featherweight belt holder Eric Morales takes on Gudi Espatis in a rematch of their 2001 title fight, won by Morales. November 8, for the light heavyweight title, it's Roy Jones against Antonio Tarver. November 22, it's Oscar De La Hoya's first pay-per-view event as promoter, Piesta De La Hoya, Knight of the Aztec Warriors. Upcoming pay-per-views. That's got to be something. That's not, they come on, deep breaths. You got to move to the side in, in the jab and then a straight right hand right to the body. In round two by CompuBox numbers, Cotto 9 out of 40, Sabias 3 out of 65. So Demetrius Sabias is having tremendous difficulty landing punches. 
having landed in single digits while throwing a lot of punches in each of the first two rounds. Now Cotto is trying to get low for the body. He's trying his best, but his trainers didn't tell him that early on in the fight it's going to be rough. And Ceballos finally lands a jab over the top, then goes back to punching Cotto's gloves as Cotto comes off the ropes with a right hand over the top and a left hook to the body. Now Ceballos gets him into a corner and lands a punch or two before Cotto gets out of the corner with another left hook. Right hand landed there. Just not quite as much authority on the right as is the case with his splendid left. Now here's a good prospect in, in, in Cotto, and he hasn't gone to the body once. With conviction, if you know what I mean. You got to make your opponent weak in case the fight goes beyond eight rounds. The headshots are good, but it's a maybe. Good right hand by Cotto that time. And there's a left hook to the body. Ceballo still stalking, and Ceballo sneaks in a little right hand over the top. Cotto with a three punch, make it a four punch combination. Finishing up with the left hook as he will customarily try to do. Cotto believes in his punching power. Doesn't care, it doesn't matter what you do to him. He believes, Cotto, that he can come back and hurt you. Left hook to the body by Cotto. And the left hook upstairs caught Ceballos on the point of the chin. Demetrio Ceballos took a lot of punches against Shane Mosley, who landed an average of 38 blows around against him before the TKO came. Cotto isn't landing nearly that many, but he has landed some very authoritative left hooks. And when you throw a lot of punching power like Cotto is doing and bouncing on your feet like that, you're getting a double beating. You lose your win. Throwing the shots and the foot movement makes you lose a lot of your energy. Good point. It's a very tiring way to fight, isn't That's it? That's right. And I find myself, uh, George, as you were saying that, wondering why he's moving so much since inside he does such a good job. Doesn't have any movement as far as rolling and countering and all of that in his repertoire. It's all going to be done with his feet right now. It'll take some years to get that. Hey, let him come to you now. Let him come to you. Don't be over anxious. Come on. He's going to counter, counter punch you. Move up in the side. Here is the uh, left hand of Miguel Cotto. A punch, uh, a medley of his left hands, a punch that supposedly will take him uh, to the top of this division and perhaps. Another division north of it someday. That was a look too to the body. That left hook. That's probably the best punch of the night. Beautiful night in Las Vegas. And if this will be a beyond capacity crowd inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena. A certain number of tickets which are almost never sold because the views are not regarded as absolutely perfect were released to the public yesterday because there's such enormous demand here. Everybody and his brother from all across the United States trying to get a ticket for Deloya Mosley. Harold, how do you have this bite scored through the first three? <laughs> okay, Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Miguel Cotto. Jim, you know, I always talk about effective aggressiveness. Demetrius Ceballos is the aggressor, but not effective. I mean, it's ineffective aggressiveness. Miguel Cotto went in this set of clean, strong shots. The left hooks, the overhead rights, and the left jams. And you mentioned one thing very interesting. You said the peekaboo defense. Jim, Miguel Cotto fights. It, it's as close to a custom auto style as I've ever seen in my life. He looks like Floyd Patterson, Chegui Torres, and the, or an early Mike Tyson with that style. Very, very hard to hit a guy in that peekable defense. Yeah, and the result is that Ceballos has had the dickens of time of a time just landing single punches here and there. Most of them being blocked by Cotto's gloves. How do you fight that peekable? You 
jab right into the gloves. You throw your shots right into the gloves. Forget about hitting the face. After a while, they start looking around, and you got easy shots. Well, you try to throw the right hand right through it. Is that how Inga Mario Hansen landed all those right hands against Floyd Patterson? Exactly. Guys don't like to keep their hands in front of them when punches are being thrown right. And you got to be a puncher, though. You got to make that head move back. Goes That's that left body hook. And upstairs with the left hook. That's probably his favorite single offensive ploy. Left hook to the body, left hook upstairs. Or vice versa. We've seen him do it both ways. Goto opening up a little more, and so Ceballos gets a chance to land a couple of punches. Must feel like a brief vacation for Ceballos when he actually puts leather on Cotto's face. Chopping right hand, quick left hook. Cotto's a pretty patient fighter. Ceballos' corner told him not to go bringing the fight to him, to back up a little bit. Doesn't make, seem to know any other way. Cotto come to you. Doesn't seem to know any other no, way. But he's he keeps going up, after Cotto. He keeps coming after him. No respect. For Cotto or his corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look ahead. And these are the judges for the Shane Mosley Oscar De La Hoya fight later on this evening. The veteran Stanley Christodoulou, referee and judge from South Africa. Very solid, noteworthily. He had the one logical and correct card for Lewis Holyfield 1, March 13, 1999 in Las Vegas. Also one of the panel that gave Roy Jones his easy win over John Ruiz earlier this year. Second judge, veteran Dwayne Ford from here in Las Vegas. 86 title fights, as you can see. Scored Barrera Morales 1 for Barrera. A lot of ringside experts agreed with him. Scored Judah Corley a little bit earlier this year for Corley. That was the lone dissenting scorecard and a victory for Judah. And Anak Hong Tong Cam from Thailand, veteran WBC judge, has probably made more than 30 trips to this country to judge WBC sanctioned fights. Therefore, sixth De La Hoya fight. Noteworthily, he was one of three judges who gave Floyd Mayweather his controversial victory over Jose Luis Castillo in their first meeting. Oh, They'll be the judges later tonight. Yeah. The last judge you name can always be dependent on to uh, come down for the house fighter in a close fight. Anak Hong Tong Cam of Thailand. <laughs> Always with the house, you think, huh, Larry? That left hook again caught Cotto and snapped his head a little bit. Cotto blew out of his nostrils after Cotto landed that left. Or Ceballos, I should say, blew out of his nostrils. Cotto is a good fighter, but you, you see a fighter with that much potential in his punching power, sometimes you need to bring another trainer into the camp to kind of teach him the other ins and outs of bobbing and weaving and counter punching so you don't have to use all of your energy backing and running up on your legs like that. Yeah, no, that's that's a really great point. You know, he's still in the family structure here, being trained by Evangelista Cotto, and as Bob Arum has shown over the years, he will strongly suggest to his top prospects that they avail themselves of the services of super top trainers in the sport. you, you got to bring in some guys to add. Well, he's been, very he's been very successful so far, George, and he's been uh, fed a few veterans to... Uh, Add to his resume, um, when he fights some good young live fighters, uh, they'll find out just how good he is. Trinidad didn't do badly sticking with his dad his whole career. Neither, for that matter, has Shane Mosley. Another left hook lands for Miguel Cotto. Starting to throw the right with a little bit more authority here. You throw those right hands and the guy's got his hand up like this. Sooner or later, you're going to have hand problems. Having to visit the doctor a lot. You've got to find out what to do with those hands. They start hurting you like that. And you can believe he's getting some soreness right now. He's shaking his uh, left hand a little bit. I don't know if that 
means that he felt a stab of pain or if that's just a habit. I mentioned several times in the first fight that Juan Lescano throughout his career had averaged 46 punches per round. If you want to know what that pace looks like, watch Cotto. In the first four rounds, he threw a total of 200 punches, an average of exactly 50 per round. It's a measured pace for this weight class. It's designed to maximize power punching. That was a little rolling by Cotto that time, a little... Shifting of the shoulder. Ceballos actually landed a jab. Not sure how many times we've seen that, but it's in single digits according to CompuBox. Manuel Stewart could take those guys and teach them how to get leverage on that right hand and at the same time get in a defensive position after his throne. Five rounds in the books. Super prospect Miguel Cotto, thoroughly dominant so far against Dimitrio Ceballos of Panama. Cool. Let me have the bucket now. Spit in there. That's it. Breathe deeply. He didn't like that uppercut. Come on. Come on. You, you got to do something. You got to be brush him. There's nothing else. You need to put some pressure. You need to box. You need to fight. Talk about consistency. I mentioned that Miguel Goto averaged 40 punches per round in the first four rounds. Then in the fifth, he threw 51. I should say 50 punches per round. So he averaged 50 punches for the first four. In the fifth, he threw 51. He does the same thing every round, by and large. Well, it's interesting. His corner was saying what we were saying. They were telling him to to be more aggressive and, and suggesting that he's been moving around too much. Uh, and now you see him standing his ground and uh, pressing Ceballos. Starting to try to use his right hand more in the last round and in this round. Maybe. You can believe he's hurting his hands, I'll tell you that. And he's get, throwing those left hooks right on the elbows of that big, long... Paul fellow, those shots hurt you more than they do your opponent. Well, Larry mentioned that he shook his left hand a couple times. Maybe that's why we're seeing more right hands in the last two rounds. Cotto was put on this card specifically by top rank because... They want the world to see who, someone they think is a great prospect and who will someday be the kind of fighter that uh, you'll get on planes and buy pay-per-view for. So is he putting on the kind of show that Bob Arum would have wanted him to deliver under the circumstances? He's turning well, southpaw now. Well, it may be a little bit premature to see him in that way. Turns southpaw, lands a left cross, throwing it sort of up and under. Now he turns the left cross over. And he hits those shots good from the softball position. Gives him a chance to put a little more power behind his left hand as he's able to cross his body over behind it. Who would have thought? I don't know if he turns softball, but I mean, he's effective in that direction. I'm not sure the left hand is hurt anymore. Although a guy who's this predominant left hooker probably can't expect to go through his whole career without having some trouble with that hand. So well, it's, for instance, it's, it's, it's interesting when he finally goes on the attack, it was from a left-handed uh, position. Seemed to take Ceballos by surprise. Now this is the kind of stuff we expected from Cotto. Well, these guys from Panama, those got boxers have a lot of pride. You're not just going to beat them because... Blood coming from the right eye of Ceballos They now. say you're good. Yep. No, it's clear Ceballos is here to go out on his shield rather than to yield to Cotto. But Cotto is gradually piling up a lot of punishment as the rounds go by. A lot of punishment is more better than points this time. It's hurt.
Referee's instructions in Oscar De La Hoya's dressing room just moments ago. Here's Joe Cortez. Okay, Oscar, how you doing today? Good. Okay, I'll be the referee for your fight tonight. When I say break, I want you to break clean. If there's a knockdown, you go to the neutral corner, you stay there until I tell you to come out. There's no three knockdown rule. We're going to unify rules. Watch your low punches, your kidney punches, and your rabbit punches. The mouthpiece comes out. We wait until it's low in the action. We have it replaced. No Vaseline, no water, no instructions, okay? Okay, don't hit your opponent when he's on the campus. If you hit him when he's on the campus, it's going to cost you points, or you may be disqualified if you cannot continue. Accidental headbutt, we go to the four scorecard after four completed rounds. The cup here is okay. You're below the navel, it's all right. If it starts riding up during the contest, we'll have it adjusted. Okay, any questions here? Okay, no saving by the bell in any round, including the last round. Thank okay. you. Okay, good luck. You. God bless. You heard Joe Cortez mentioning the cup. The protector, which uh, was the source of some speculation and, if you want to call it controversy, after the fight against Fernando Vargas last September right, when uh, Joe Cortez, prior to the start of the fight, looked at De La Hoya, pointed the cup and said that's too high, and that was the end of the discussion. No penalty, no correction, nothing was done about it. So the Mosley people said that's their biggest issue going into the fight, and they are going to demand that his cup be legal and not terribly protective against body punches. Harold Letterman, how do you have this through six? Okay, Jim, 60 to 54, six rounds to nothing, Miguel Cotto. Jim, if anybody wants to know why there was a delay at the start of round six, uh, at the start of round seven, uh, big, uh, Dimitri Sabalos had too much Vaseline over the cut over his right eye. Vic Dracula, the referee, is not supposed to take it off. He had the Sabayos corner take it off. So, therefore, you know, he didn't let the round start. In any case, Miguel Cotto landing all the good shots. Six to nothing, Cotto. And meanwhile, uh, our interpreter, Ray Torres, tells us that between rounds, Sabayos' corner told their fighter, if he doesn't start fighting, they'll stop the fight. Now, that's pretty rough to say that against a guy who just threw 64 punches in a round. I mean, I think he's trying to fight. He just hasn't been able to find Cotto. He only landed four of the 64. Well, it may be another way of them uh, saying to him, if, if you don't stop getting hit by so many clean punches as he was in that previous round. Yeah, That, that could have been a two. They're going to be very careful now. That was an incident not too long ago. Boxer from Panama being seriously injured. After walking Fatally. along, throwing 50 punches around for the first five rounds, Goto threw 83 punches in the sixth, really stepping up the aggression, and particularly after he switched to that southpaw stance. Oh, there's a left hook to the body, George. Oh, he's doing it to the body and to the head now. He's found his range. He's not running away from the fight. He's confident now that he caught up and I can do anything. Now. Oh, there's a hard right hand. That's the most authoritative right hand I've seen Miguel Cotto throw. And you saw the left uppercut in combination with the left hook. This is great stuff right here. And I think his corner was pretty serious. Ceballos is going to have to get in there and throw some shots or they're going to stop it themselves. This is the way Cotto scores his knockouts. Constant accumulation of punishment. Look at Patience. that left hook. Yeah. Looking very good here. Probably going to finish Ceballos. In this, in this round, round the fact, one. he's going to finish him right now because Ceballos, his corner man, just walked up the steps and said, "We've seen enough." Obviously, yeah. they were as impressed as we were with yeah. the last minute of the fight. That was the right thing to do. The guy was starting to catch from a powerful puncher. That's all you want is a victory here tonight. You don't need the men seriously injured. Well, I tell you, I'm pretty sold. He's got offense. He's got defense. He's as calm as any young fighter I've ever seen. Very good-looking young fighter. But once again, let's wait till he sees a live young fighter opposite him. Go to close the show, landing 39 out of 63 total punches in that last round. So it's a seventh round technical knockout victory for Miguel Cotto. He remains unbeaten and remains on track as one of the most celebrated, if not the most celebrated, young prospect in the sport. The new pride of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Married, father of three, mature beyond his years. Disappointed in Sydney by his loss to Abdullah, eager to go further as a pro.
He's the one standing from all from uh, a quartet of very good-looking young 140-pounders coming out of the Olympics, including Bahada and um, Abdullayev and um, the kid from Cincinnati. Ricardo Williams. Ricardo, Ricardo Williams. Ricardo Williams came a cropper against a journeyman named Juan Valenzuela. Uh, Abdullayev scored an unexpected knockout loss. And, of course, uh, Panchito Bojado was also beaten unexpectedly and has vowed to improve. Which now let's go to uh, ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Vic Draculich calls a halt to this bout at 2 minutes 28 seconds of round number 7. The winner by TKO victory. He is now the number one ranked WBA contender, and he is still the undefeated WBC international champion, Miguel Couto. Final copy box numbers. Miguel Cotto cruised for five rounds, throwing 251 punches. Then he stepped it up, and in the last round and a half, through 146 punches, landing nearly 50% of them. That spelled doom for Demetrio Ceballos. And look at the connect percentage. Ceballos connected on only 33 of 433 punches. He was in single digits. No.